welcome back to my channel i hope you're all well it's always a vlog so today is going to be a mixture of things that i get up to during the day there will be sales hopefully parcels being taken um, and maybe some things i've bought i don't know i don't know what's going to happen if i'm honest but stay tuned and we will see what goes on today the title will give you some idea of what's happening <laughs> haven't even at this stage thought of a title because I don't know what's going on. Anyway, if you enjoy the footage or the videos, please consider giving me a big thumbs up. It really helps me out. Subscribe if you haven't already. Why not? It's free and you can unsubscribe at any time, but don't because this channel keeps getting better and better and hit the bell for notifications. So, I don't know whether I've discussed this already, but I have been approved to do live Poshmark shows. I'm so excited um, I'm going to start doing them very soon. Now, by the time this video comes out, I may have already done my first one, but I am going to be advertising it all over my social media. So if you aren't on my Facebook group, Mrs. England's Emporium, go over and join. If you follow me on Instagram or, you know, you'll see it on there. But if you don't, go follow me on Instagram um, or follow my page and I will put it all over so you will see when it is. Um, come over and join. I've got a code that you can use. Um, it is Julie England N8, the letter N and the number 8. If you put that in when you join, then you'll get £5 credit. Um, and come on over and give my shop a follow or a like or whatever it is on there. I can never remember. It's different everywhere. And uh, yeah, you'll be able to come on my live show and see what it's all about. I'm nervous to do it because I've never done it before. I'm not expecting to sell anything on my first sale um, because I don't really know who's following me on there. I don't know whether it's people that want to buy my stuff or fellow resellers or people that already follow me, you know, subscribe to me on here and watch me on other places. I have no idea. So whether I'll sell anything or not is yet to be seen, but it should be fun. So come on over, say hello, and um, yeah, if I don't sell anything, I don't care. I just want to have a bit, ex get a bit of experience in it and build it. And then hopefully I'll sell things in the future. I'm hoping for a couple of sales, fingers crossed. But yeah, I'm trying. going to try and get rid of a load of clothing. And I'm hoping it'll give me my bug back for buying clothing. Hopefully, because if I sell a load of it, then I haven't got, I mean, I have got a lot of clothing, but I haven't got as much to have. I mean, look at my boxes. They're practically empty now. I'm getting rid of everything. So, yeah, things are selling slowly. But when I do this Poshmark show, hopefully I'll get rid of quite a few items. Anyway, let's get into today's video. Okay, I'm kicking off the video with some sales. So, um, some of these have gone for good money. Some of them not so much got Rob stuff over there, some of which I bought, I will add, and stuff over here, which I bought all of this. So, these Jules wellies, turns out they aren't really worth picking up. Um, they're only a size two, which is probably the reason why. They took a lot of cleaning as well. They were disgusting. I had them in a other video and I cleaned them all up with elbow grease. They look amazing now. Anyway, um, after fees and everything I've paid, postage, all that sort of stuff, um, I made £9.50. Got an offer for £9.50. I took it and after fees and everything, I've probably made about £3 on these. So, yeah, not great. But they'll do. They'll do. I mean, they have got initials in and I didn't really clean the bottom. But the rest of it are pretty good. They're pretty good. Okay, a couple of Etsy sales to show you. I will get that out in a minute. It is a mystery right now. This. Now, this is remarkable. <laughs> Somebody has paid £26.99 for this on Etsy. And when I bought it, I thought it was okay. Bought it for a pound from the car boot. But when I got home, I realised that it wasn't that good. But I thought, I'll try my luck with it. And this is a reason why you should try your luck with things. Someone has bought this off Etsy, like I say, for £26.99 plus postage, which is amazing. And I only had it on eBay for 15 So I'm really pleased with this. But it's coming up to the gifting season and my Etsy is going crazy now. So... 
I'm very excited about the future of my Etsy account because I'm getting sales all the time at the minute. Probably more than eBay. But yeah, £26.99 for that plus postage. So after fees and everything, I've made about £20 on this. Really, really happy. So this, this is another bosun head. And this has gone on Etsy. It's this lovely like Italian chef. He has got a bit of a chipping to his nose, which is obviously in the listing. I mean, you cannot get away from that. Um, these are quite prone to chipping because of the material they're made out of. They're made of like a chalk, chalkware, and they do chip very easily. So when you store them, you've got to be very careful. Anyway, he has gone for £30 plus postage. He is going to the USA. So, yeah. Um, I need to make sure he's packed up really well in a good strong box. So after fees and everything, I have made, what have I made on him? About £22 just on him. So the box of Burson heads I got was definitely worth the money. I love him, he's very nice. I've sold quite a few now, still got a few left, but they're doing okay. This gorgeous like shawl scarf with these lovely pom-poms on the end. This was given to me by my sister-in-law, Elaine. So if you're watching Elaine, thank you very much for giving me this. Um, this has gone on eBay for £28. Um, here is the label. It's a Scotland cashmere blend. Strathory, is that? Um, yeah, like a big shawl. It's lovely. It's really soft. Um, £28 plus postage. So after fees, I've made about £22 on that as well. Very happy with that. Then I've got this Michael Kors shirt. I mean, it's some that cringy, horrible material. I really don't like it. Michael by Michael Kors shirt in an extra small blue. It's very thin. It's almost like chiffon, and I hate chiffon. I'm one of those people that hates the feel of chiffon. Anyway, this went for £11 plus postage. And after fees and everything, I've made about £8. No, I haven't. I'm lying. Six pound. I've made about six pound on this. Um, no, eight pound. Sorry. Don't, because I've got postage as well. Yeah, eight pound. So yeah, not too bad. Um, so I've had to take Rob's eBay off my iPad for storage reasons. Um, so I'm waiting now to find out how much these have all gone for. But as you can see, these are what I bought him from a yard sale not that long ago and so is the curtain there that's a timberland quilted jacket pretty sure i've already spoke about that so i'll probably just take that out to be honest but um yeah i think i have showed that already but these i have no idea so i will be back when i get the prices right so here's a good memory test for me I need to tell you what we got for all of these. So this is a pair of Nike trainers that I picked up from the garage sale that I organised a couple of weeks ago. Um, paid £5 for them and we got £60 plus postage. So after fees and everything, we've made about £45 on those. Really happy with that. We did actually sell the other trainers as well that I bought, the Nike Air Force Ones, but they got cancelled because they changed their mind. This shirt here is an All Saints um, Spitalfields shirt. Um, it is a size medium. This has gone for £16.90 plus postage. So after fees and everything, we've made about £8 on that. This is a, what is it? It's a jacket, I believe. Tootle, 100% um, acrylic with leather jacket. It's like a cardigan with leather and suede. Really nice. £50 for that, plus postage. So after fees and everything, we've made about £40 on that one. So really good. And these trousers, I couldn't tell you what they are. Um, Let me have a look so I can tell you exactly what these so, are. These are men's Savine trousers, I believe. Um, they're quite a big size, I think. I think, well, I say big size. They're not really. They're a 38 waist, but big for what we pick up, shall I say. Anyway, um, these have gone for £7.50 plus postage. So after fees and everything, we've made about £2 on them. <laughs> but I've got a feeling they came in a bundle. So it's not a massive loss. Um, they, may, they may even have flaws. Sometimes we find flaws and we get less for things, but they still go. We either get our money back or 
we uh, make a little bit of profit but not much to uh, get excited about but yeah i am sorry about the darkness in this part of the video you can hardly see these trainers and this cardigan but um yeah really happy with these i'm going to get them all parceled up now and um i'll see you on the next part so i'm going to go drop all these off i've got a trolley full a bag full and this so i've got to go to the post office and to every and get these drops and then i'm coming back to do some listing i was going to go um, around the charity shops but you know when you have days when you just really can't be bothered and i feel like the prices are just going to be ridiculous today and i'm just going to get annoyed for walking all that way by myself and not buying anything <laughs> so i'm really negative don't i but i'm a bit down in the dumps with charity shops as we know i'm trying to save my money for car boots and things so i may go later in the week we'll see but yeah, I'm going to go drop these off and uh, yeah, do some listing. So let's bring some sales in. What a lovely day. There's actually a nice breeze as well. It's not too sweltering at the moment. First drop done, set five to, um, drop. well, drop five off at the every shop, which is back there at the garage. And now I'm going to go drop all these at the post office. I was just thinking it always depends on who you get whether you have to wear them or not some people just tell you to pass them over and some of the people tell you they need weighing first to make sure the weighs the way the, the um, weight is right should i say so yeah i might be in there a while because i've got a few boxes but like i say depends who i have um some of them just whip them through others don't <laughs> now look at this guy <laughs> I'd love to be him right now. I bet he'd be getting a really good um, good breeze. <laughs> Even though he's got a helmet on, of course. Which he should do. Safety first. <laughs> I think I should wear a helmet sometimes just for walking. Oh, right, that's them done. Trolley is now empty. I don't even know that you can see that there. Um, it's absolutely... It's just really bright out here. Really, really bright. Not too warm today, though. But warm enough, if you know what I mean. Anyway, yeah, the lady then, after me telling you about some people wear them, some people don't, she weighed like two of them, and then the rest she just took. But I think she didn't think I had that many, so that's why she maybe weighed the first two, and then was like, saw the rest of them and thought, sod that, I'll just put them through. <laughs> or maybe she was just checking that I'm trustworthy by the first two. Who knows? Anyway, I'm going home now, I'm gonna have a cuppa. And then I'm going to crack on with doing some listing. So yeah, that is my day to day mapped out. No buying today. <laughs> As of yet, anyway. Things could change. I could end up changing my mind and going out, but I doubt it very much. When it's really hot like this, I just want to stay at home and drink water and sit in front of a fan. <laughs> This little segment I'm going to do now is going to be about if you sell on Depop, just something that has been brought to my attention that I think needs to be told to all of you that do use Depop as a platform. So basically they're bringing in a new policy apparently, apparently it's new, um, it is actually on my Depop now so I don't know how long it has been there. But basically, if you use Vinted, you will know that when you get an order from Vinted, you um, get a label basically on the order. So at the bottom you get get shipping label and then you download label or you can download the QR code if you want to do that and scan it at the um, shipping place. Or you can download the label and print it off yourself and stick it onto your parcel. Depop is very similar. So Depop basically encourages you to get a label through them. So it's the same thing. So when you're setting up your Depop account, you can either do your own shipping or Depop will sort the label for you and the customer pays. So customer pays Depop, Depop sends you a label. You don't have to sort that out. But you have the option also to sort your own shipping like you would do on eBay. The problem is with it, if you go through Depop and get your shipping label from Depop, then you are fully covered. You are covered with the tracking to basically make sure that if something gets lost, broken or whatever, that you are covered, you're insured. But 
if you do the shipping yourself, so you go from a third party company and buy your own label, Depop does not cover you. It does not cover you as a seller and they will not pay for anything going missing or anything else. You would have to then do basically what you do on eBay and you would have to go through the claims yourself with the part with the parcel company or, or whatever that you've used, you know, Royal Mail, you would have to go through them and claim on your own. So you aren't covered through Depop. Which I think is interesting. I don't know why they do it that way, but I suppose they have their reasons. Um, also, I will say that with Etsy, if something gets lost or broken or whatever, and it's under, I think it's $250, I think it is. Because on my Etsy, it doesn't show it in pounds, it shows it in dollars. Now, I don't know whether I haven't got my settings right. <laughs> it does show me um, in the UK and does all my prices in pounds. But when it comes to fees and stuff and talking in the policies, it talks dollars. So it's, I think it's up to $250 and it goes under the, e the Etsy policy um, for protection for sellers. They will refund your buyer with no cost to you something to look into and something to bear in mind when you're selling on there obviously if you're selling more expensive stuff you have to be really careful make sure that you describe everything properly make sure you pack things really well things accidents and things do happen to parcels that you can't help and it's out of your control but as long as you try your hardest to get it there in one piece it's all good but yeah, all the different platforms have all different policies. So make sure when you're starting on a new platform that you become familiar with how they work and what happens in certain situations. I'm one of these people that, you know, flies by the seat of my pants. And <laughs> Sorry, pretty woman quote, love that film. And I, I tend to just go with it and learn as things happen. But it's not always the best thing to do, as you've probably realised on this channel, because I cover things like this a lot. Um, but yeah, if you can, if you have the time, get a cuppa, read through all the policies and see how they differ. Because it's quite interesting how different platforms work differently. So I've got a question for you. At the moment, are your sales slow? Have they dried up? Do you feel like you're not getting as much from eBay as you really want to? Well, I've got some hacks for you that will help you with this. First of all, if you feel like things aren't selling on your shop, the first thing you should be doing is checking your inventory. Seeing what you've got and seeing whether you are buying the right stuff. It's so important to make sure you know what's selling out there. I tend to buy things that I think are good and they tend to sell so it's not very often I go out there and check what me what is selling but if you have a laptop and you have a stop if you have a shop or a store on eBay you can go onto your reseller dashboard or your seller dashboard as I say <laughs> as it should be called um, and you can check Terra Peak you can have a look at all the different things seeing what things are sought after and what things have more for sale that are being sold and you can go from there and re see what you need to be picking up another great big tip is selling similar now a lot of people say this doesn't work but for me it does every month at the end of the month when i have x amount of listings left for my free listings i will check um, what I've got to list and whatever I've got left on top of that I do a sell similar on that number so say I have 200 items I will end 200 items and then sell similar on 200 items on a computer it usually kickstarts my sales if this doesn't work for you add a coupon to your shop you can go on and you can add a promotional coupon you can put on how long you want it to be on for so you can do it for a day a few days a week a month as long as you want this will get traffic to your shop you can also start a sale on items that have been on ebay for over 14 days so if you have items that have been on for over 14 days they aren't getting much interest bang a sale on bang a sale on see what happens your sale will last two weeks and yeah just see what happens 
The other option is to offer free postage. If you offer free postage, it can be quite desirable. I've noticed that a lot of people would rather buy something that is £14.99 free postage than buy something that is £10 plus £4.99 postage. For some reason, people get a real bee in their bonnet about postage costs. They really do. So if you also put free postage on, you're likely to get a higher star marking for your reasonable postage costs as well, which helps out. You don't want to be getting marks on your account because that can make your fees go up after so long if you get too many. So make sure that to have your best seller performance and your best seller ratings, that you post out on time, describe things properly and, you know, basically give a good customer experience. Leaving feedback as well is a good way to get others to leave feedback back for you. I tend to wait until I get feedback before I leave feedback, but a lot of people don't like that practice. The only reason I do that is because before I have left feedback for somebody and then they have left me negative feedback or they've tried to return an item under false pretenses within the 30 days, obviously. After 30 days, they can't do that. So you could leave feedback after 30 days, but that's keeping on top of all your sales. If you're getting loads of sales in, it's quite hard to remember to do that and go back and it's very time consuming. Hence why I do it the way I do it. It just makes more sense to me. I reward my feedback with a feedback. If I get a neutral, which I have before, I still leave positive feedback. Um, you can reply to feedback as well. If you go onto a desktop computer or a laptop, you go onto your feedback. If you get a negative feedback and you cannot get it removed, which we'll talk about in a moment, or a neutral or even a positive, you can reply to any of those feedbacks. So try and keep it professional, keep it lighthearted, straight to the point, and you can answer anything on there. So your buyers will see that underneath a negative or a neutral or a positive, because positive feedbacks can be negative. Sometimes people don't like to leave a negative, but they'll put a negative comment within a positive comment. So you can reply to that, and it shows your customers that you can be trustworthy and the reason why it might have happened. It's always a good way to show people um, who you are as a person as well and what you stand for as a shop. And also sometimes it's nice to have your say. I think it's good they've put the reply feature on there because it's nice that you can actually answer back to somebody that said something if you're not quite in agreement with it without being argumentative, of course. <laughs> if you get negative feedback and you are not happy about it and it seems very unreasonable, you can apply to eBay or appeal to eBay to get it removed. How I do this is I used to go on the chat. I don't anymore. You can call, of course, you can email, but I prefer to, um, to um, get in contact with eBay on X, formerly Twitter. Um, they are really good on there, the team on there. They are brilliant. I normally tweet them asking them for help and then they get me to send them a private message. Obviously, don't put any personal details in the tweet. Make sure you go onto your messages and reply on there. They usually send you like a little link so they can look at your account. That's all good. It's all legit. You click on the link, you sign into your account, then they can see what you're, you know, what you're talking about. Um, if you are unhappy with it, you can appeal and you can get the feedback removed. I've seen it happen lots of times. Luckily, I haven't had to do this yet, but I know others that have. So it's definitely worth looking into. But yeah, if your sales are dry, drying up or you haven't had many sales, try all these techniques and you should get more sales. Also, look at your pricing. Um, if your pricing is a little high, you can bring it down. I always advise people, if anybody messages me about an item and says, what do you think about this? Do you think I should, what do you think I should price it? If I can't find anything on it for them and I can't help them with it, I always say to them, look, I think it's quite rare. Can't find anything like you. Um, it's always very wise to ask someone else to look because sometimes when me and Rob find things, he can find stuff on it and I can or vice versa. So it's always good to get another opinion. Um, but I always say aim high on something, go as high as you think it should go for and then you can always bring the price down. It's very hard to put the price up if you're starting with a lower price. That can put a lot of people off, obviously. But let me know if you do any of these tips. Let me know if they work for you. Let me know if they don't. And also, any other tips that you think could be helpful, pop them in the comments, guys.
I do apologise for the fan sound, but I can't live without it at the moment, guys. It is a must. Anyway, I'm going to leave the video here. Let me know in the comments if there's anything you'd like me to cover in a future video, if you found this helpful, if there's any tips that you can add, put them down below. And I will see you all on the next one. Take care, be kind, stay, stay safe. I can't even speak. <laughs> Ta-ta, guys.